Lucas Graciano, and welcome to Watts Weekly. Uh, this week, I wanted to piggyback a little bit off of Eric's video from last week, which was uh, about inspiration and the things he has in his studio that helps uh, uh, keep him motivated and, and uh, inspires him for what he does. Uh, for me, I wanted to talk a little bit more focused about reference uh, and the things I have in my studio that help me get the, the level of detail I want in my illustration work. I'm a firm believer, firm believer in using a lot of reference. Um, I, I definitely will push away from it um, quite a bit, but I, I like to have that uh, springboard to jump from. So um, let's talk about books first, and uh, we'll kind of make our way down, kind of talk a little bit about each of the things that I like to use that I have readily available in my studio. So um, books obviously are great to have all sorts of books, instructional, inspirational. Um, they're, I, I have a wide range of artists that I, I like to collect from fine artists to illustrators to video game artists. And um, I, I like to find inspiration and um, little ideas from each of those types of artists. So um, I'll have a collection of different types of uh, anatomy books as well. Anatomy is very important to, to have available uh, to you, so I've got several different anatomy books that I'll, I'll reference, and, and um, uh, different how-to books. The Loomis books are always good to have um, if you're if you're struggling with something fundamental. Um, but I've got a, a good range of anatomy tools stuff. So the statue from Anatomy Tools, the skull, just a basic skull I found on I believe that was at one of those exhibits, the body exhibits. Uh, those are really good to to. Um, you would definitely want a skull in your studio. I, I find myself using it as, as a structural element quite a bit, taking it and turning it and moving it around so I get just the right sense of form for a particular head angle I might need. Um, the Asaro head is great for just the basic planes of the, of the face. So if I'm not getting lighting right in a face that I don't have great reference for, I can take the head, move it around, and get the right kind of reference I need, or right kind of uh, sh uh, shot I need for it. Um, I like to also use the internet, obviously that's that's kind of a go-to. The, the problem with that is all of the artists are using the internet and um, oftentimes using very similar um, images that they're working from. So you gotta be careful from that. Um, oftentimes I can go to an illustrator and go, oh, hey, you know, I've seen that, uh, I, was, I was using that image in one of my illustrations or I come across it one on the internet. So, uh, but still the internet is, is still probably one of your best tools for finding good reference. Um, you just have to be able to extrapolate the reference image, information you're getting from your reference and make it your own. So you don't want to copy too closely to what you're seeing on the internet. Um, I have different types of figurines that I like to use. I paint a lot of fantasy, so I've got dragons. This is a, a, a toy from the McFarlane series of dragons, which are really detailed and, and very cool and, and conceptual with, with the designs of the dragons. So I like to use these as kind of a starting point. Like I might take a, um, a wing and, and move it around or something just to help get me a little bit more believability in the sketch that I'm designing. Um, some dinosaur toys, I forget who these are made by. But I found these on Amazon, and they're highly detailed, um, really good references. But you know, I can take that. What does a dragon head look like from this angle or from that angle? You know, and it gives me a little bit more of a uh, springboard to jump from. So um, I use these. These knights are great. I found them on on eBay. I don't remember the name of the company that was doing those, but um, they're they're kind of expensive. But for me, they're worth the investment because I do a lot of knights and medieval armors and stuff in my illustrations but i'll use that he's posable up to a point and i can take just take you know a gauntlet or something and move it into an angle i need and light it and get the reflections and everything i need off of that so those have become in real handy i've got about five or six different types of medieval armor knights in in my collection that i will just kind of go back and forth and decide which one works best for the particular um uh, assignment i'm working on um, i use these figurine hot toy heads. These have been really handy. Um, this is Superman. You know, it's a generic head, but look how detailed that is. It's incredible um, the amount of their skin pores and I can take it and I can light it a certain way and then shoot, you know, angle it, shoot it and get pretty good reference. I mean, look at the detail on that, the lighting there. The rim light's really nice. I mean, it's, these things are 30 bucks maybe on, I found them on eBay. You can just buy the heads. You don't have to buy the whole figures. 
and um, these are solid. I mean, I usually I get a few different ones, uh, male and female, maybe some with a beard, some without, and just start your collection. This stuff has become invaluable to me. If I'm running into an issue with lighting or details or anything on a face, I go to these. These are pretty much my go-to uh, um, heads. Uh, the trick is taking that information against extrapolating it so it doesn't look like Superman. You want it to be your own, um, your own person. So just painting from reference and relying just on that is not going to get you by. You have to go on your experience in figure drawing and life drawing and be able to pull that muscle memory and that, that information out of your muscle memory and and, um, and uh, be able to use it and, and bend it how you need to. Um, collecting costumes is always good as well. Oh, wait, wait, before I go back to that, uh, let's talk about this guy. Fysine makes this. This is a posable, heavy-duty armature um, figure that has squashes and pushes and, and you can see the bending. And I mean, there's a lot of really cool, malleable um, poses you uh, malleable um, material that this is made out of and you can pose them into lots of variety heavily detailed um, I got this on eBay made by a company called Phycine P-H-I-C-I-N-E or something like that I don't remember exactly how you spell it but this is a great source they've got male and female different body types um, it gets a little weird with different skin tones and breast sizes and stuff but um, for the, what you get that I mean this is it's like a 60 or 70 dollar item on eBay and um, it has become invaluable to me. I always start out with my sketches first, you know, my, my gestures and my thumbnails and try to get as close to um, what I'm imagining as possible. And then when it comes time to make it practical and work and get the details right, I go to these these uh, figurines and the heads and stuff and I, I pose them and how I need them and I light them a certain way, I get my shots and then I can then put in the more believable information into the, um, into the sketch. So um, this has become invaluable. I love this, this little tool here. Um, I do have a collection of costumes as well. Um, so when that stuff doesn't work for me or I can't uh, get that exactly right, I go to um, model, getting a model, getting some costumes, getting some props, and um, shooting exactly what I need. Um, I usually try to let the model, I try to pick models who are good at what they do, and I oftentimes give them some freedom. I try to say, hey, this is kind of what I'm looking for. If it doesn't feel natural to you, show me what does. And oftentimes that model will give me something I wasn't thinking of and it works 10 times better. It's something in the vein of what I had imagined because I have to stick within those parameters, but it's something that helps me um, get a little bit more believability and grounding in my illustration work. Um, I'm a big fan of traveling. I love traveling. I think traveling is a big part of, of, of re reference collecting. Um, almost any trip I take, I write it off because I use it as a reference. You know, I go in and, and shoot a bunch of reference, hundreds if not thousands of photos of anything and everything. So yeah, I'll shoot everything from um, you know doorknobs to different filigrees and the, the, the architecture to um, the people to anything that helps me to kind of build that library of, of different information I can use. Uh, get, get a wide range of stuff, people, landscapes, everything. Um, it's all gonna help. And traveling is just a great way of getting a, um, a chance to feel of what it's like to being in those different places. Um, the people, uh, the smells, everything that, that uh, you can't get just from looking at those images on the internet. Um, so I'm a big, big fan of traveling. Uh, get out there and do it. So that's pretty much it. Um, I, I, I'm sure there's things I'm missing, but um, hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of different uh, tools you can use to, um, to, uh, to use reference. Um, get creative. You know, there's, there's a lot of different things out there that you can use. But uh, anyway, we'll see you guys next time on Watts uh, Weekly. Thanks.